Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Modded Minecraft and last time we got the basics of create going and we even set up this contraption for making the precision mechanism and we did get about three stacks of them so I think that should do for now and as you'll see this machine isn't running and that's because I've got rid of everything else I had down here and the reason for that is this room isn't big enough for everything I want to do with create so I've moved everything upstairs but before I look at that I've just come down here next to where the water wheels are and the shaft is just coming through there and into this rotation speed controller that we crafted last time and I've just got this cranked up to 128 and then that is sent right up to the top of the factory which we're going to have a look at right now. Right so this is what I've been working on we're at the top floor now now there may be other floors but for now this is the top floor and I've got all of this flooring in and I've started setting up these little rooms at the side but before I have a look at that up here this is where the shafts are coming up from the water wheel it's not that one this one here and then we, have, we just have a lot of gearboxes and shafts on top of there and we're sending this all the way down to the end of the factory and we are going to go around here eventually as well which i've already started so we'll have stuff at the other side and stuff in the middle as well but i'm just getting things going at the minute so the idea is whatever i decide to put in i can just tap into these gearboxes that we've got up here and then just bring some shafts down or gearboxes, whatever we decide to do, um, set things up nice and easy without having to worry about stuff like this. So I haven't done anything really that different to what we did last time. I've got the mixer going over here with the blaze burner underneath, and I've been using that to do a little bit of brass. But instead of having the mechanical press above a depot like I did last time, I've now got it on a belt. So I can just put stuff into here, and I've been putting a load of iron, gold, and copper in here. So we've got a few of these sheets, which we're definitely going to need today. I'm going to need some more copper though, but I've also got some brass on me as well. So I might as well put that in there. And that should get sent out from this funnel under the mechanical press and into there. So we also have our stressometer up here. And that is telling me we're doing all right for stress units at the minute. But with the stuff we're going to put in today, th this may be an issue. So hopefully it won't be too bad. But if it is, I may need to reduce the speed of stuff. But hopefully that won't be an issue. Right, so the plan for today with this big crazy setup is to start auto stocking some of the basics. So we have a look in here. We're going to have a little bit of sand and I believe it's the same for gravel as well. And from the sand obviously we'll get glass and I hardly have any of that as well. This is all stuff that can be done fairly easily with a material stoneware factory. But I didn't want to do it like that. I want to have a big crazy setup for create. Nice and noisy and big machines going everywhere. So that's the plan. But I do have one material stoneware factory set up. So let's just go have a quick look at that. So down here, next to my storage drawers, we just come up here and let's go down here a bit. So I've tidied this up a bit around here, but I do have a material stoneware factory here. And this is producing andesite. And the reason for that is we're using create today and andesite is definitely a big thing. So this oak drawer is filled up. I may upgrade that so I can get a little bit more stored in there. But this will just keep producing it as I take it out. So this does actually use lava. So I have had to do a little bit of a setup for that. So we just have the sink on one side and then the lava coming in from this end of tank. So if we just come into the nether, I'll show you what I've done with that. So just down here, I think it is. Yeah, this little setup over here. This was over a lava lake. So it's just the electric pump from mechanism. We've got that powered at the flux point and then that will just suck up all of the lava within a radius around here. I'm not sure how far it goes, but I've got plenty for now. So that just goes into this end of tank, and then that goes up to my material stoneware factory. So because of that, I have a ton of andesite, and I can craft up all stuff I need for create and not have to worry about it. So the first step in this automation is cobblestone. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so cobblestone generator, nice simple thing. We've all seen this in Skyblock and two plot worlds, and you don't normally tend to do them in a normal overworld because they're not really necessary. You just go mining. But with Create, there's a lot of things you can do with cobble. You can get a lot of materials out of it. Not just the gravel and sand that we're going to do today, but you can get iron and tons of other things. It's definitely worth setting up a really good cobblestone generator if you're playing with Create. So, the thing we've got here, we've got lava flowing into a waterlog leaf block, and that'll create as a cobblestone block in between. And we could just stand here and mining it, but that's a bit boring, isn't it? So, one of the standard things you can do with Create is to use a drill. Now, this isn't the way we're going to do it. But I'll just show you this because I think this is the intended way. So if we just put a drill next to some rotational speed, it'll just keep mining that. And then we can have a hopper below or the chutes or any other way you want to pick it, these up. And it is pretty fast. And the faster you have this running, obviously the more stress it's going to use, but the quicker it breaks this. But there is actually a much better way. And I don't know if it's a little bit of a glitch or it shouldn't work, but it does. This is the way that Tango came up with, and it's a really clever thing. But it is a little bit more expensive. So these drills are really cheap. Just andesite alloy, iron, and the andesite casing. So these are really good early game solutions. But 
what we're going to use is a pump now for that you do need copper so it is a little bit more expensive but if you just get some of these fluid pipes this is copper sheets and the copper so i'll grab a few of those i am going to need tons of these so i'll just grab a little bit and then the mechanical pump is just one of those pipes and a copper gear so if you just put that here i'll rain go away i'll put a cog there and then i want to do like that so that would pump up which is exactly what i want so let's just put a few blocks around here and what we're going to do here if we just put some blocks up here and i'll grab a bit more lava now i am going to put this in here but not yet because it'll take it all out and i don't want to do that so what we need is let's just put a temporary block there i'll also grab a bucket of water put that in there and remove that now if i put this lava in here it doesn't have anywhere to go so if i break that it's going to try and pump the lava into this block here. Now, it doesn't take any of this lava. So we could just have one lava source with tons of pumps on top of it, sending it up. And if we have water on top of that, it'll create loads of cobblestone. And what we can also do, if we have blocks at this height and push them side to side with a piston, when this lava tries to push up, those blocks technically aren't there until they get to one end. And then when they get back there, they'll break the cobblestone. So if you have these going back and forth really fast, it'll break the cobblestone and you instantly have tons of it just flowing out of your machine so that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna get that set up now and this is a design by tango and i'll have a link to his video in the description so let's get this set up i can get the cobble flowing okay so i made a fair bit of progress there and it's basically exactly what we did over there with that one source but now we have 56 of them and i've got pipes around here for some reason so yeah we just have 56 of those pumps pointing at the underside of these tough blocks and then flowing water on top of that so when the cobble breaks and comes up it'll get pushed this way and into these chutes so i'm going to have some storage under there but we'll talk about that in a minute because i've just done a few bits around the back to get this thing actually working i've taken two separate shafts here because i wanted to have these at different speeds so i've set this one down to two because each of these uses stress units so i wanted to have these as slow as possible so it only needs to put in the tiniest bit of lava and it turns into cobble so having that at two no problem and then this one i've just been experimenting with this one a bit the input is 128 and that was way too fast so i did gear it right down but you need to have it fairly fast so i've had i've done that at 64 and that seems to be working quite well so what we've got here is a linear chassis and these blocks just stick together automatically and you can push them with a piston and they'll automatically stick together i have then taken some super glue and glued everything on that same level to them so those will get pushed as well but they're going to get pushed this way so we have a sticky mechanical piston and below that we have a gear shift so this will rotate backwards and forwards depending on if it's powered or not so at the moment it's powered so if we unpower this it'll go that way and then the blocks get sent flying down that way some of them pop off but we can put some glass on top to stop that happening and if we power this again it comes back this way and yeah basically we can just keep doing this backwards and forwards and we get an absolute ton of cobble now we don't want to stand here doing this so i'm going to put a redstone clock in here but it's just a vanilla redstone clock nothing too interesting so the interesting bit is what we're going to do at the other end and where this comes out we've got some shoots and this is just throwing them on the floor at the minute and this is what i've got from testing just a handful of times so what i want to put down here is the item vault and it's these things here and you can do absolutely crazy size storage with this so let's craft up a few of these i think i need 63 so let's do that okay so these are really cheap it's just two iron sheets and a barrel for each one but you can they are a multi-box structure so you can put loads of them together to have a big crazy storage so let's take those i'm going to put those directly beneath these shoots going out like this and then i've had on that in the wrong place yeah, so one like that, and then we're going to have them wherever the shoots are, so we'll just go on there, and it should be seven long, so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's perfect. Right, so now when I run this, that will all go into there. Now, at the minute, it, says, it doesn't say there's anything in it, so let's just see if that works. Should do that a few times. It's absolutely crazy, this thing, I love it. Right, yeah, so that now says there's 382 cobblestone in there, just from those few seconds of running that. So I think we should now get this finished, shouldn't we? Let's get the clock in and get the glass on top of here. And then we can just leave this running and pile up thousands and thousands of cobblestone. And then we can get on with processing that into gravel and into sand. Okay, so that is all set up now. We have the glass on the top. And we also have a basic redstone clock here. So if I just flick this lever, that'll go back and forth and start pumping out the cobblestone. Now, I definitely feel the frames when doing this. So we are going to need a way of turning this off automatically. But as you can see in there, 
we have 7,000. And it does take a few seconds to update. So it goes up by about 300 every time, which is absolute madness. But what I've put down here is this thing called a threshold switch. And this is a fairly cheap item, but we can use this to automatically send a redstone signal when it gets to a certain level. And then we can use that to turn the whole thing off. So the defaults are pretty decent to be honest. So if we, once this gets up, to, gets up to 75% this little icon will go back down here and that'll start emitting a redstone signal so we're absolutely nowhere near that yet this the thing can hold an absolute ton of stuff but when that gets down here all we need to do is run some redstone dust over to this clock and power that block and then that will turn this whole thing off and then once we start using the cobble and it runs down to 25%, the redstone will turn off and it'll kick in until it gets back up to 75% again. Don't really need to worry about this too much in a minute because it is going to take absolutely ages, but I will get that wired up. So the next thing really is to get on with processing this, isn't it? And the way we're going to do that is with the crushing wheel. And the coolest thing about the crushing wheel really is how you craft them. I love these mechanical crafters. It's just a big wall of crafters, place items on it, and it visually just puts things together. So it's a really cool thing to do. So I'll just figure out where this is going to go and we'll get on with it. Right, so I've got 21 of these mechanical crafters ready to go. Very cheap, electron tubes, brass casing, and the crafting table. I'm going to put it in here, and we just need to have one cog on the side of it. So they're really easy to power. So if we just put these down here like this, we can sort out the orientation of them in a minute. But the way I like to do these is the 3x5 in the middle all pointing down. So go like that. Those are all pointing that way, which is good. Two, three. Right, so that's five high. And then if I go three on the side like that and then another three on that side those are all pretty much pointed the same way and you can have these point anywhere you want as long as they all go towards one end point so i'm going to take my wrench and i'm going to click these two to go this way and then that one that way as well and i'm going to have a i can put a barrel down there so i'll grab a barrel and pull out there and then when this is finished it'll put it into there so now i just need to get this powered so we'll put a cog there I suppose we could gear this up as well, couldn't we? So let's do that. Oh, stressed. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, these do use a lot, don't they? So I may need to actually do this either way and slow it down. So let's put a big one there. Hopefully this will work. No, nope, that's still the same. Oh, dear. Tell you what, let, let's get a speed controller. So I'll put that there like that. And then we'll put the big cog on top. And I'm going to... Yeah, so leave that at 16. See if that works. Grab a gearbox, put that on there. That looks like it's working. So how are we doing for stress? Moderate. Okay, so I could probably speed this up a little bit. Let's go 24. Is that right? Yeah, that didn't do too much. So that's not bad. That's right, so let's craft these crushing wheels. Fairly cheap recipe. We need andesite alloy. And then we'll grab some stone. And I'm going to do a few of them. So let's get a bit. And then some planks as well. And then all we need to do is stone in the middle, and then the planks go around the edge like that. And then the andesite alloy goes all the way around like this. And then once you've put in a recipe, it'll try crafting it. And if it's a valid one, it'll get there. Now that is a little bit slow, isn't it? So we could speed up a little bit, hopefully. But I don't need to do that many of these things. And it is a pretty cool thing to watch, so I'm not that bothered. And then once it gets to the end, it'll craft it and then put it into this barrel. There we go. I should get two. Nice. Right, so I'm just going to do... I don't even know how many I need. Uh, let's do Let's do as much as I've got. Let's do as many as I can, because the more I've got of these, the better. So I'll get these done, and then we can get it set up to do the crushing. Oh, yeah. By the way, this this is already kicked in, because it's got up to that level. It's absolutely madness how fast this goes. So I've got 62,000 cobblestone in there. That's come over here. Powered this block, and I've just got a torch tower here. That'll, that'll power that block, and then turn this clock off. So, nice. We're doing all right for cobble. And this will just kick back in once I start using it. Nice. Right, so I've got 16 of those crafted. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use them all. But I'm sure they will come in handy at some point. And I probably won't be crafting anything on here for a while. Because I've just had to sew this right down. I did have this at 48. But I was using 93 of my network stress capacity. But I've loaded this right down to 1. And it now I now have half of it left over. So that's pretty good. But also doing that. I got this advancement for desperate measures. Drastically slow down a mechanical crafter to procrastinate on proper infrastructure. Yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. No proper infrastructure from me just yet. And that's because I want to get these things up and running. But as you'll see here, the kinetic stress impact it is quite a lot. So if I run these at anything near a reasonable speed, 
I'm definitely going to run out of stress units in my network. So I may have to do another temporary measure, get a windmill going, something like that. But let's see how it goes. Anyway, we've got a few things to figure out first. So one of the things I've done is I've added a storage bus from AE looking at this. I just wanted to see if it would work, basically. And if we have a look in here, I have 70,000 cobblestone, and that is what I've got in there. So I've taken everything that was in my storage drawers, and I've put that into here, because I've set this as the highest priority on the network. So any cobble I put into here will go straight into there. So one of the things I could do, as we want to use this to automate gravel and sand, I could do this through a. So I could have a setup that takes the cobble through my ME network, and then basically pipes it into another crusher, or even something from another mod. But we are doing it with create and we're definitely going to do it create and i want to do all the moving around infrastructure with create as well because there's some really cool ways of doing it so let's block that up we are going to be able to access it through a and that is the plan eventually so i can use the gravel and sand in there but to produce it we're going to do it all outside of that network and do it all in create so what i want to use is the brass funnels and we're going to what we're going to do is put these on the side of here and filter them to only allow cobble but we also want to request this, so we're going to have some more item vaults. Now, I'm not 100% sure where they're going to go, but if we just, let's just plonk one down here. So let's say that's one for gravel, and that one is for sand. What we're going to do is have something like this, the threshold switch. It probably is going to be one of these, actually, looking at this. And if it says it's fairly low, it's going to request that it brings more cobble across, and then we'll have a machine that creates the gravel, pipes it into here, and then once it gets to a certain level, it can say, right, I don't need any more cobblestone, and then it can shut this off. And the same thing will happen with the sand one over here. So it'll look at this, say, I haven't got enough sand, request the gravel from here, and then that'll go into a machine that grinds it down into sand. And from that one as well, we're going to get clay and flint, so that'll be like a byproduct of that, but we're only worried about the sand really for the minute. And then after that, I haven't really got a final plan for this yet, but to turn the sand into glass... I was thinking of maybe just doing that in a smelter, but we could use an encased fan with lava. Now, if it, let's have a look at one of these, just in case you haven't seen this. These things here, we can put a fan down with lava in front of it. It can basically smelt anything, and you can do this with an infinite amount of stuff in it. So you can just throw down stacks and stacks of sand in front of it, and it'll cook it all into glass. And then we can automatically pick, pick that up, and we could probably put out another vault as well, actually, couldn't we? So I'll Tell you what, let's just put another one there and say that one's for glass. Now, I'm not 100% sure on where these are going yet. I'm just trying to explain it all. But I also haven't shown you these things as well. So the design of it, I've got that going all the way around now. And I've got all of these shafts going all the way around. And we've got the gearboxes going all the way along here so we can tap into that anywhere. Instead of using the polished cut deep slate like we have over here, I've switched these out for the metal girders. And this is a block from Create. And from that, we can also attach the brackets and these can hold the shafts as well just to make it look like it's got a bit of support and i do think these are really cool so i think i'm going to take these out and swap them out for these but now i think rather than explain everything every single block that we're going to use i'll probably just get the gravel one up and running show you how it works basic concept is just what i've explained it'll request it based on how much is in here and then we'll have the crushing wheels creating it and piping it in so i'll get the first one set up and we can have a look all right slight confession i may have got a little bit carried away there I finally, finally love this mod. Been putting off getting into Create for so long, and I'm so annoyed myself that I've finally just started doing it. But anyway, let's have a look at what we've been doing. So yeah, I, as I say, I, I got a little bit carried away and basically did everything. But anyway, let me explain what's happening. Firstly, we have a brass funnel here, and that is attached to this belt. So this will take out cobblestone and send it along here. Now, as you'll see, it is not actually sending out cobblestone, even though we have, how many we've got in there? 57,000 so the reason it's not doing that is because we have this thing here called a redstone link and this is currently Powering this brass funnel so that means it won't send anything out while it's powered This is the receiver, but we also have two transmitters attached to that that could send a redstone signal So firstly we've got this one and this is a buffer chest So when the cobblestone comes along here, this is filtered to only accept cobblestone and it'll just go into this barrel But we also have a threshold switch on here just like we've got on the vault over there and if this gets up to, um, I think it's only 40%, yeah, so if this gets up to 40%, this will then power on, this will power, and then this will power this, so it won't send out any more cobblestone. As you'll see, that's not powered now, but that is also done over here. So we have a threshold switch on this vault that is looking at how much gravel there is. If the gravel gets below this amount, this will go up here, and then this will power off, and then this will allow the, the cobble to come around. 
So the reason we have it in two places is if I didn't have this one here initially and what would happen was when this went off it would request more cobblestone, loads of it will shoot out into here and then it would completely fill up this barrel before this gravel had processed and then turned the request off again. So we have to have it in both places because once we get up to a certain amount that is going to be enough once the gravel is done. So it's a handy little way of doing it. And I'm very happy with how that's working. I have tested this quite a lot and it is working pretty well. So after this barrel where the cobblestone is sat there, it'll just get sent up into these crushing wheels. And I do have some extra shafts here. And the reason for that is I do want to have another two of each of these. And I did craft tons of them as we saw. But I just don't have the stress capacity at the minute. I'm pretty much using everything. So let's just have a look over here. And I have geared these down a little bit as well because it was going to be crazy so what are we at yeah we're at 93 percent and they're not going as fast as i'd like them to let's have just have a look at what i think they're at 64 yeah that's set to 64 and i believe that's the same for all the other three so they go through the crushing wheels and then once they tend to gravel they drop into here and then just go along this belt into here and then as i've already seen this looks the threshold switch looks at this and then once it powers it'll shoot off the cobblestone coming in the next setup is almost identical and this is the one for the sand so this just does the same thing it looks at the threshold switch but this will then request gravel if it gets too low and that one is over here so we have a funnel on the end of where the gravel is this will power off and then the gravel will get sent along here along this belt and then into there and it's the exact same setup from there so the gravel comes up here drops down there and then it'll go into here what I also have, because gravel doesn't just produce sand, it will also, if we have a look down here, produce flint and clay. Now, I, I still need to deal with these properly. I'm not going to leave them here. But as I have this A2 cable here, I could be a little bit cheaty. I know, I know it's not cheated, but I'm trying to use create as much as I can exclusively up here. But I just have the storage buses on the back of each of these vaults so I can look at the gravel, the sand, and then further down we've got the glass. So yeah, that's the gravel and sand done, and I should admit as well, I'll, I won't skip over this. I, I did actually die while I was setting this up, because these things, yeah, if you fall into them, you, you take a lot of damage and you die. And even with a jetpack, I couldn't just fly out of it, it wouldn't let me out, and I couldn't break it with my pickaxe either, so I was just there, and all my hearts would, just went, and I died. Never mind. So next one, we have the glass, and this is done the same way, so if this gets too low, it'll request the sand from over here, exactly the same way. The sand comes down here and into this barrel, exactly the same again, we'll get this to 40% and it'll turn off the sand coming. And this, instead of going through a crush yet, we've got it going on, oh no, don't do that, I always do that. Right, so we have the sand coming out of this, onto this belt, and it is going really slow, but I have to have it this speed so that it'll cook as it comes past here. So what we've got here is an encased fan behind a lab source. And we've got two here because I tried doing it with one and even having this on one RPM, it just wouldn't cook it fast enough. So I've got two here and I think this is on two RPM, might be wrong, but that sends the sand across here. And by the time it gets to the end of this, it turns into glass and then it just goes onto this belt and into there. So that is as far as we've got at the minute, but we've got all of this hooked up to our A2 system as well. So if you have a look in here, you can see 2098 glass there, and that's what I've got in there. So the idea is now I can just use as much of that glass as I want, and then this whole monstrosity here is basically designed to just fill it all back up again. So I won't really be using the gravel and the sand for anything else, I don't think. I don't think I've got many plans for using much concrete. But the glass is the main thing I'm using. Now, I know this will be much easier if I use a different mod, and I do have tons of mods I could use. I've already mentioned the material stonework factory from Industrial Foregoing. But with this amount of cobble, I could just put this through the mechanism machines or whatever else i got. I think I've got Ender I over as well, haven't I? So, yeah, a few things I could do. But I wanted to use Create, so that's what I've done, and it's very cool. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the cobble to do like an iron farm as well and some of the other things, some of the other resources you can get from Create very easily and very cool ways. But I think this is, this auto stocking, this is what I really wanted to do. So should we give it a test? Can I use the glass for anything? I don't really know what I want to use it for. Should we, should we do some quartz glass? I don't have tons of sets of quartz, but let's just get, I don't know, 600. Let's do that. Now, is that going to kick in and request anything? Probably not. What are we at? Actually, it's not far off. Right, it's done that. So should we do uh, some quartz fiber as well? I think that uses a bit. Let's, I'm going to use tons of this. Oh, I ain't got enough. Right, I can do 300. Is that going to do it? Oh, could be there. Right, as you see, the sand is coming out. And once the sand comes out, the gravel also gets requested as well. And because the gravel is coming down, the cobble is coming out as well. And that is all going where it should be. 
Oh, this is so cool. This is way better than just having a single block doing everything for you, isn't it? Very happy with this. So yeah, that is how it works. We use all the glass and it automatically gets processed again. Very, very cool. So yeah, it, it is a bit slow, but it can do an absolute ton of these at a time. So yeah, I can just leave that to do its thing now. And in a fairly short amount of time, we should have that automatically replenished. Now, I don't think the cobblestone is going to need to kick in at any point. No, the... the this thing is just so crazy. It just runs for a couple of seconds and it pretty much fills this thing up. So I think that is everything I wanted to get done today. I know it's a bit of a monstrosity for something that could be done much, much simpler, but I am way happier with this than any build I've done in this series so far, I think. Definitely a big fan of the Create mod and I'm going to be doing a lot more with it. So if you have enjoyed this episode, please do leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.